to dear friends, dear colleagues, who welcome to the OVO seminar. So we are uh, yeah, approaching the end of the current season hmm, dedicated to talks, uh, presentations given by uh, uh, yeah, colleagues uh, in an early stage of their career. So uh, why? So we, of course, it was a very long season and we have the impression that uh, many activities uh, uh, are already planned to take place uh, uh, in in presence. So there are I mean, the, the, there is a high number of of conferences and workshops you know, which are planned for the next uh, weeks and months. And it seems that the current COVID situation allows this, or at least the, the, the approach the, of the world the, to the to the current COVID situation allows this. So this doesn't mean that there will be no, let's say, further season or fifth season. Uh, yeah, this very much depends on how things uh, will develop in the next months, but we will have a longer summer break and uh, we would like to celebrate, yeah, let's say the, the, the last part of the season by uh, having or by two talks given by two of uh, my good friends and co-organizers yeah, of uh, the OVO seminar. Uh, Shoham and Matthias. And today's speaker is uh, Shoham, Shoham Sabah from uh, Haifa, from Technion Haifa. And uh, of course, uh, Shoham is a well known uh, uh, young, but a well known scientist uh, in the optimization community. He received his PhD in mathematics in 2012 from Technion. And his supervisor was uh, Shimon Reich. And uh, he was uh, after that for one year postdoc in a group of uh, Mark de Boer at uh, Tel Aviv University and moved for one year to Germany yeah, at the University of uh, Göttingen, where he worked uh, with Russell Luke in 2014. So I'm uh, moved back to the Technion and he was uh, for six years assistant professor. He became in 2020 associate professor at Technion Haifa. So he had uh, his fields of interest are well known. He worked on optimization, non convex convex optimization, working, he's working on numerical algorithms. He's uh, developing numerical methods. Uh, yeah, Schwab has uh, uh, many uh, very good and very well cited publications. And uh, today he will talk about uh, faster Lagrangian based methods. So, Schwab. I'm a little bit uh, sad that, uh, yeah. Our initiative yeah, comes to an end, but uh, this is also a step back in the uh, normality. And yeah. uh, so, please. Thank you so much, Radu. Thank you for the very kind introduction. And I would like to use uh, this opportunity to also deeply thank you for uh, running this uh, seminar and being the, the leader of this seminar for. Uh, almost two years, right? We started in April uh, 2020, if, if I'm not wrong. So it's uh, almost two years, uh, very unbelievable that already two years passed. But uh, anyway, thank you. Thank you very much for taking the lead um, on that. And also to, to Matthias for uh, helping. Uh, help. we, we helped you to to arrange everything and run it uh, very smoothly and very nicely. So thank you. Uh, so today I will I will tell you about a recent uh, joint work with uh, Mark Tebul about uh, faster Lagrangian based methods. And actually, sorry. So you you see my slides moving today. Okay. So the the main. Uh, Focus today will be on on Lagrangian based method, and actually, as as Radu mentioned, I'm I'm mostly working in non-convex, but this will be in convex, so it will be a it will be in the classical uh, mode. So the main goal of this work was to understand the logic and the essence of Lagrangian based methods. And therefore we wanted to simplify things as much as possible. And therefore we focused on the very basic model optimization that you want to minimize a function, objective function psi over a set of linear equality 
constraint. And here we, we just take a very basic assumption on the model. So the psi is, could be a non-smooth function and convex. And actually here you will see throughout the talk that I'm using a sigma strong convexity, but actually sigma could be zero, which means that you only have convexity. If you have sigma uh, bigger than zero, then you have some strong convexity, but it's not, uh, it's not must. And we have a linear mapping and a vector uh, B, a fixed vector. And just for simplicity, we denote by calligraphic F, the set of all feasible point, which means satisfies the linear equality constraint. And as I mentioned, the main goal of this work that we started uh, two years ago with Mark uh, was to, to understand what stands behind Lagrangian based methods and on the way to unify, to unify the, the analysis if simplify. And actually at the end, we have managed also to improve the convergence rate analysis of Lagrangian based methods. And actually we managed to do that through a, a new framework that we call it FLAG for faster Lagrangian that brings uh, ability to unify uh, most Lagrangian based method that you all are uh, very familiar with in one uh, framework that also bring a non-ergodic rate of convergence result, which is very rare when you discuss uh, Lagrangian based methods. So we'll, we'll get to it uh, later. So just to, even, even though it's a classical model, I guess you are all convinced that it's, it's, this model is, is, is very general and very flexible to, to cover many classical models that we are used to use uh, in optimization in relation to uh, Lagrangian based methods. And, and the first one is edit, additive composite model that you have a, also a composition with a linear mapping. So by definition of a new auxiliary value, variable uh, V, you get a linear set of constraints. And you see that this classical model immediately fits to our model that you split into two blocks and you get it. Another very classical model that is very, uh, very popular when dealing with Lagrangian method, methods is block linear constraint that you have for uh, two blocks of variables and you have two linear mappings A and B and you have splitted objective functions F on U and G on V. So you see that if I define the vector X to be the two blocks, Psi the sum, I get immediately that it's a, a particular case of our model P. So it's cover both of them. And actually even another classical situation in optimization that we want to consider also the addition of a smooth function with a Lifshitz gradient uh, uh, part in the objective. For example, here I take F and I'm adding H which has a Lipschitz continuous gradient. So again, it's a classical composite model, but, but here the main difference that we have a linear constraint. So again, it's only changed the assumption on the function, but it's also fits to our general model. So we can focus on that. And if we focus on that, and we discuss Lagrangian based methods. So obviously the Lagrangian itself is just by giving the, uh, the dual variable, the Lagrangian multiplier that we call it here, y, and we get the linear term. And obviously another ob object that is very useful when you devise optimization uh, methods based on Lagrangian is the augmented that you want to penalize the constraint with some penalization parameter that we call it here a uh, rho. So obviously if you take rho to zero, you get the Lagrangian uh, itself. I will not discuss it too much here in this talk because I want to discuss more the, the issue here is about algorithms, but just for to make it uh, complete, we obviously need to assume that our problem as a saddle point, which means that under classical uh, constraint qualification, you get the existence, a point that satisfies this inequality, 
So this is a classical, I'm, I'm not dealing here with sophistication of assumption how to, to, to get, to, to prove that there exists cell point, we just uh, assume it. Okay, so let's start our understanding of Lagrangian based method by putting the basis for our uh, framework. And to understand the framework, we first of all need to understand the way to unify, and uh, at least the way we see Lagrangian based method and our ability to unify all of them into one uh, framework. And the ability is to split it to the update of the primal variable. This is, you see here, the first one with the X, and we have the update of the multiplier. So actually in all Lagrangian based methods, the multiplier is updated by this classical, simple, explicit formula. And here, just for to give another flexibility when you implement the algorithm, it's, it's very well known. Many uh, researchers studied it. We also add here a scaling parameter uh, mu. So this is this is this is fixed, and this is shared by all Lagrangian based methods. And actually, the only feature that is changing between Lagrangian based methods is encapsulated here in the primal update when you need to choose a certain algorithmic map to apply on your problem in order to get the new primal variable. And actually, once you change the algorithmic map, you get a different algorithm. So let's take an example. For example, the very basic method of augmented Lagrangian invented in the late 60s, saying that all what we are doing in order to update the primal variable X is to minimize the augmented Lagrangian, as is, which means that we take here a minimization step. So in this case, our algorithmic map, calligraphic P, is just exact minimization applied on the augmented Lagrangian itself. Later on, due to several reasons, very classical, we wanted to consider a more, uh, a more sophisticated augmented Lagrangian method that is more with, his, with more ability to, to apply it on several numerical situations that we want to take the augmented Lagrangian and linearize the smooth parts, which means we take the quadratic part, we linearize it, we do not touch the objective function and we get this update. So here we need to consider a prox term. We just, to, to make it a, as general as possible, we work here with weighted, weighted norm, but it's, you can think about a, a scalar prox term. It's also fine. And what you see here, the algorithmic map in this case, you take the augmented Lagrangian, you have the smooth part, and what you are applying actually on the augmented Lagrangian is nothing but a proximal gradient step. You smooth the, you linearize the smooth parts and you keep untouched the non-smooth parts. This is exactly the idea behind proximal gradient. Suppose you have the block model. You have two blocks, U and V, and you have the block constraint here with the two matrices. So first of all, just to keep in mind, even if you have strong convexity, you will see later on in our results, in this block model, you just need to have one of the functions to be strongly convex to get the results. But if you don't have strong convexity at all, you will see later which results can be proven. But anyway, when, when I say strong convexity in this setting of block of two blocks, it's only to one of the functions. So in this case, obviously, since we have two blocks, the basic idea is to develop a method that exploit this block structure by alternating minimization, which is the classical ADMM method invented in the mid seventies that fixed, for example, the first primal variable V and update the U, then use the updated U to update the new V and goes on and on. You see, again, 
the update of the multiplier is always, always the same. So in this case, our algorithmic map is just alternating minimization applied on the augmented Lagrangian. And if you recall the augmented Lagrangian in this setting, again, we have the coupling quadratic term that always make the application of ADMM very difficult. Therefore, we want to linearize and decouple the blocks of U and V. Then we will use the proximal linearized ADMM. And here, again, the idea of alternating comes into play. We fix the V, we linearize the quadratic term, and we update U. Once we update the U, we fix it here, and we update the next block. So here you see that we applied proximal gradient, alternating proximal gradient on the augmented Lagrangian. Okay, so once you change the algorithmic map and you fit it into your model, into your optimization problem, you get a different optimization, uh, different Lagrangian based methods. One, you change the P, you get a different <laughs> algorithm. Okay, so if we fix this idea, now we can start developing our framework and unify and simplify the analysis of all these methods and others in one nice framework. So we fix the idea of this algorithmic map and we develop the concept of nice algorithmic maps. So what is this concept? It's a bit involved, so let's take it uh, step by step. So actually the definition talk about, discuss per iteration of the algorithmic map. So we say that the primal algorithmic map that we denoted by prim t, t is any positive number. Later on, the t will replace by iteration. So it will replace by, for example, by k. But for now, we, we are speaking about per iteration. So we fix it by t. And this is, you can think about any of the algorithms that we have seen in the slides before. Proximal gradient, alternating proximal gradient, exact minimization, whatever you, you want, any optimization step that you can think of. So, and using this algorithmic map, we generate the new primal variable that here, just not to mix, we call it Z plus. So we say that this map is nice if there exists a scalar delta between zero and one and two PSD matrices, positive semi-definite matrices, such that the following inequality holds true. So what we have here, so it's a bit technical and we'll discuss it later on to, to explain exactly, but what I'm measuring here on the left-hand side, I'm updating the primal variable and I want to measure the augmented Lagrangian changes once I update it. And I'm doing it with respect to any feasible vector C. So what we are seeing here on the right hand side. So we see here four terms. First of all, we have here a measure of the feasibility, which is obviously a term that we should encounter. And what we have here more, we have the delta P. The delta P is a very nice term that we are all very liking when we analyze algorithms. As you, as you can see here, when I put Z and Z plus, I have the gap of two successive terms that we know that in analysis, we like it very much when we telescoping and like that. And we have here two additional terms that actually the most important here is the third one with the sigma. So you see that if you have strong convexity, you have here an additional term, otherwise it's canceled out. As you can see, we are working here with two sequences and we will discuss these sequences because this is a major uh, feature of our framework that allows you to improve and accelerate the convergence of Lagrangian based methods. So we have the sequence of Froti, remember the prox, the, the, sorry, the, the penalization parameter of the augmented Lagrangian that will change according to T. And we have another parameter tau T that relate to the prox term. We will discuss it later on, but you see that we have 
version for the convex setting and version for the, for the strongly convex setting. You need to change it upon your situation of the problem data. Once we have the nice, we can devise the framework. And to do that, in order just to illustrate before the framework, I want to take a, a break and show you that indeed what we have discussed before are nice algorithmic map. So for example, let's get back to the proximal augmented Lagrangian algorithm, the classical algorithm for the 70s, which means you take the augmented Lagrangian and we just add here a prox term. You can add the prox, you can remove the prox. It all depends on your weight, weighting matrices. If you take M to be zero, you just get augmented Lagrangian. If you take M to be something else than zero, you get prox. So by a very simple uh, three line of proof, you can prove that this algorithmic map that applying prox, proximal point to the augmented Lagrangian is nice. And the parameter delta is exactly one. And the matrices P and Q that you need to identify in the definition <coughs> is exactly M. Suppose you want to apply an linearization on the quadratic canalization term in your augmented Lagrangian. Then you need to modify the algorithm. You see here, I have the parameter rho t, I have the tau t. I linearize the augmented term and I can prove that also this map is nice with parameter one. And these are the two matrices. So as you all know, if you want to linearize the augmented term, you must pick a prox matrix that satisfies this property. This is a classical uh, result that we all know that you need to choose the prox term such that it cancel out this PSD matrix. And you can check all other algorithms. We'll discuss it later. They are all satisfying the nice uh, definition, obviously with different delta, different matrices, P and Q, but you can prove and uh, we will see it uh, later that they are all nice in terms of this uh, definition. And therefore, they all can be used in our framework. So what is, what is the framework? So also the, the framework, since we, we wanted to unify and generalize several algorithms together, it's a bit involved. So let's take it step by step and, and divide it to parts that will, will make it simple. So the input of the algorithm is your problem, your optimization problem that you need to identify and also to verify if you have strong convexity or not. And a nice primal algorithmic map. So you can think about any of the examples that we have discussed before. This is your algorithmic map. Now we want to build the algorithm. So you want to gener generate the following sequences. So let's take it as follows. So first of all, we have added a new multiplier sequence in addition to the classical multiplier sequence. We added a new one, an auxiliary multiplier that we call it lambda k. And it has a very similar update to the classical multiplier. But you see that we have the sequences <laughs> of rho k and tk getting into into a play, again, you need to distinguish between the strongly convex and the convex case. Once you choose one, you verify in which situation, you know exactly which sequence to choose. When you updated the auxiliary multiplier, we can get into the main steps of flag of, the, the, of our framework. So as you can see, the first two steps are coming from our very starting point that we want to apply the primal algorithmic map to get the new primal variable Z. And after we got it, we can update the real multiplier that we call it Y. What we add here, we add another step. We add another primal sequence that we, that we build in this sequence, in this algorithm, and we call it X. And actually this is our ability to accelerate the convergence of all Lagrangian-based methods together. 
So actually, you are all very familiar with, with such a step. We have seen it in many fast first order methods in the literature, Ausland der Tebul, in other uh, papers that uh, accelerate other variants of proximal gradient and different algorithms, we have seen such a convex combination with respect to this sequence. And I guess you already uh, imagine yourself what is the TK is a sequence that in the strongly convex case relate to the classical sequence of Nesterov from the acceleration of gradient method and projected gradient from the 80s. So you see it here in the case of P equals two. This is the case of strongly convex. And actually, if you have only convexity, your lambda, your sigma, sorry, is zero, then you need to update the TK using this very nice and simple formula. And you will see later on, why do we need also uh, this sequence? Actually, we have, we have seen that these two sequences, not matter what is P, uh, is particular cases of this general equation, but this is just a, a simple way to unify both of them for P equals one and P equals two, you get this, uh, this nice formula. So let's, let's take a, a bit uh, to relax and think about and discuss this, all this feature of uh, this new, uh, new framework. First of all, let's see the situation, what happened if we get to the basic situation that TK is one, we don't want any acceleration. So what do we get if TK is one? So first of all, you see that in this term, they are all disappear. And actually the new auxiliary sequence coincide with the previous one. And actually we don't have this acceleration step because the new primal sequence X coincide with the, the real uh, primal sequence C. And therefore you see that if we set TK equals one to any K, then actually we just get back to these two steps. These very nice and simple steps that we have discussed before that stand behind any Lagrangian basement. So first of all, it's okay if you remove all TK, we get back to the basic Lagrangian based methods. Okay, so as I mentioned, the main feature and main ability of us to unify and accelerate was to, uh, to propose and define this new auxiliary variable uh, of the multiplier that we call it lambda. This is a very important feature of our, uh, of our framework. And without it, we didn't manage to get uh, non-algodic results. As I mentioned, uh, if you don't want it, you think it's too complicated and for some reason, you can take lambda k to be yk, and then immediately you will see later on that our framework immediately gives you the ergodic results. So if you want just ergodic results, you can escape the, the lambda k, work with yk, and you get everything. And like we, we, all, uh, we all know. And obviously, like in any other first order method that get acceleration, the TK here plays a very important role in our ability to, to accelerate. And you will see that in here, very uniquely, uh, we have witnessed that this is not only to accelerate the convergence, but also the TK was helping us to remove the ergodic results. Meaning in order to get the non-ergodic, we had to use the TK. So actually the TK gave us twice, gave us the ability to move from ergodic to non-ergodic and to remove uh, and to get some uh, acceleration. And actually, this is all what you need. So as you all remember that proving a rate of convergence of Lagrangian based methods, usually it's, it's quite long proofs, very technical and many, many arguments. And using this framework, actually all what you need is to prove that it's nice. Once you have nice, you will see soon that you have all the results without entering into the machinery of proofs of 
rates. Okay, so let's discuss the results. What, what can we prove? So when we discuss results and rate of convergence results in terms of, uh, of Lagrangian-based methods, we, first of all, we need to distinguish between several measures that are discussed in the literature. The two most classical measures are obviously the function values that we want to measure the objective value in comparison to the optimal solution. And obviously, since we are discussing a non-feasible methods, another very important measure that actually you need to combine, otherwise the first measure is meaningless, is your infeasibility measure, how far you are from being feasible. Other measures that you can find in the literature is the gap between primal variables or dual variables, the gap between the primal sequence to the optimal, you can find measure of in terms of Lagrangian, augmented Lagrangian, and so on and so forth. There are many measures that discussed in, in the literature. And actually, another feature that is very important to distinguish, to distinguish is on what sequence you are measuring these measures. So obviously, we distinguish between rates on the sequence itself in comparison to same measure that on the ergodic sequence. You need to see the differences in that respect. So just to give a very brief, even though there are so many papers on Lagrangian-based methods, and I guess you're all familiar with the, with the classical uh, results. Uh, so the first works to get uh, ergodic uh, O of one over N uh, for linearized ADMM are results from a uh, for AMU1 and Chambol Pok and Teron Sweiter, the old device for different version of ADMM and linearized ADMM and proximal ADMM, uh, first uh, ergodic results. And actually, there are plenty of works that devise uh, uh, this, ra this rate of convergence, but the most important that mostly of them, very, very, almost all of them are uh, ergodic. Uh, there, are, there are a few non-ergodic results in the literature. For example, uh, another work of ANU1 that measured the successive gap of two primal variables, the work of uh, Chambol and Pock that measured the gap between the primal and the primal optimal solution, only in the strongly convex case. And uh, very recently, a few years ago, we are familiar with the uh, a work of Lee and Lin that uh, study a specific uh, linearized ADMM algorithm. They have developed a version of a linearized ADMM and devise a non-ergodic uh, rate of convergence, both in term, terms of function values and feasibility and violation. But this is only for a specific uh, method. Okay, so what, what we were able to prove on FLAG so once you have nice, we have we were able to prove the following results that cover, you will see later, all Lagrangian-based methods that you are all uh, familiar with. So we start with a strongly convex case. So if your parameter sigma is positive, then the sequence generated by flag, if you choose the P that you have in nice, satisfies this equality, you get an accelerated rate in terms of function values and accelerated rate in terms of feasibility violation. It's important to note that we are discussing in the norm and not the square norm of the feasibility violation and still get here a, a, fast, a, a fast rate. If you don't have the strong convexity, you just have convexity, then you get immediately reducing to from n squared to n, but the same result. And important to know that both results discussing the sequence itself. So meaning in this case, in the strongly convex case, we got acceleration and we got from, we passed from ergodic to non-ergodic results, both in terms of function values and in terms of a uh, feasibility violation. If you want to get back to the ergodic, as I mentioned before, when we discussed flag, so you can ignore the lambda k. You can just work with these two steps. 
Again, you need to choose if you have to verify if you have strong convexity or not and pick the parameter PK. So if you have just convexity, you're, you take TK to be equal to one all the way. If you have strong convexity, you need to update the TK using the classical way. You see just two simple steps like we have discussed at the beginning and no sequence 6K, no lambda K, everything is much more simpler, but the results are, are weaker. So what I mean by weaker in the strongly convex case, if we consider this weighted ergodic sequence, weighted with the TKs, you can get again, the n square rate, both in function values and feasibility evaluation, but on this specific ergodic sequence. And in the convex case, we get immediately TK equals one. We actually cover all classical results of ergodic rate of convergence of Lagrangian based methods in one simple framework. So if you have, if you have strong convexity, you can get better. If you plug the new sequences, lambda K and XK, you immediately get non-ergodic for free. You just plug your algorithm into our framework and you get uh, both acceleration and uh, non-ergodic results. Okay, so what happened if we, we move to the block model? So as you remember, I defined the, the nice algorithmic map on the non-block version, but actually it's very easy to adapt the, the definition from the non-block to the blocks uh, to the block setting. And as I mentioned before, you just need to assume, or if you have at least one of the functions strongly convex, then you get the fast rates. You just need one of them. So here, since we have two blocks, everything is double, which means we have two matrices, P1, Q1, P2, Q2, everything is double, but it's, it's more or less the same. So let's see, let's follow the, the exact details here. So I especially divided it into three uh, lines to make it simple for you. So this term was before nothing changed. What is the main feature to understand in our nice framework and how it's easily adapt to the block model is to see the difference between the, the line, the first line and the second line. So actually you see here in the first line, since we do not have strong convexity, since here I just assume for simplicity that G is strongly convex, then which means in the strongly, in the non-strongly convex, which means only convexity, both parameter tau t are equals to one. Therefore you see that in front of the terms that relate to the first block to F, relate to the function F, we don't have parameters. While to the other block with respect to V, we do have the parameter that again, if you have strong convexity, you can get acceleration. If you don't have, depends on your problem, then you don't get acceleration. And you see here, I have the Sigma term only with respect to the second block. You see that it's exactly the same, the same concept, just in a block version. So in the paper, you can find the, all the details that we have proven that all classical iconic Lagrangian based methods that we are all known are indeed satisfying the nice algorithmic map, both in the block version and the regular version. You see here a, a, a short list of these methods, but all the details can be found in the paper. In any case, for any of these algorithms, we found the parameter delta, we found the two matrices, we have ex explicit formula for them, and therefore you just apply them, you just plug it into flag and you get the results. And actually what happened if we had an additional composite with a smooth Lifshitz gradient function as we discussed at the beginning. So if we have this composite model, we have an additional smooth function that the gradient is Lifshitz continuous, then for example, if you want to apply proximal augmented Lagrangian to this, this model, obviously, as we all know from 
classical first order method, method, we want to linearize the smooth part. So we linearize the H here. And if you remember, if we don't have this function, we prove that delta is one in the same year. But if you don't have H, P and Q were equal to M. Here, since we have the H, you see, I have a different Q. And you see here the appearance of the dependence on the Lifshitz constant. So the only thing that changed is the matrix, the matrix Q, sorry. But anyway, you see, you have an addition smooth part. You, you prove it nice, you can plug it in, and that's it. And if you want to do a proximal linearize, that you want also to linearize the augmented part, as we did before, you see we had this matrix in the first example, but here we have this, this additional term that comes from the additional smooth uh, function. Okay, so I think uh, we can summarize this, uh, this uh, new framework of uh, flag. So once you want to solve an optimization problem using a Lagrangian-based method, so all you need to do is to identify your problem with our model P, meaning to identify why, what is your objective function psi, the linear mapping uh, calligraphic A, and very important to identify if you have strong convexity or not. If you have block model, it's enough to have it, the strong convexity at least, in one of the blocks. If you have it, good, you can get fast results. If not, you get the, the, the classical results, but it's important to know sigma uh, in advance. Once you have it, you have the, the structure of your problem, you devise an algorithm. You think about what is the best way to tackle this specific structure of optimization problem that you are facing. If you have blocks, version of alternating, you want to linearize some part, you don't want to linearize any of this combination, you build your algorithmic map. Once you have this algorithmic map, you prove that it's nice, meaning you find the parameter delta, you find the two matrices P and Q, and actually you are done. Once you prove that it's nice, you can plug it into flag and you get the results, the rate of convergence results for free. If you have strong convexity, you get non-ergodic fast rates. If you have, if, you're, if your function is just convex, you get non-ergodic classical results. But again, the most important thing that you don't need to get into proofs anymore. You just need to identify your parts, proving it's nice. Usually it's several lines of proof, very easy and you get the results. Okay, so thank you very much. And if you have questions, I'm, I'm here. Thank you, Shoa. Thank you very much for this interesting talk. Yes, are there questions? Manuel. Uh, thank you very much. Sure. This interesting and clear presentation is just one step. Need I need a bit of clarification. So this discrepancy measure, the delta, right? It's, it's it it involves the same p, right? Or is it a p and a q? No, it's the delta only p. You mean in the definition of nice, right? Yes, in the definition of nice, you use this delta abbreviation for a bilinear term basically right no it's not no, no it's, it's just you see it here yeah so so the u the first component cancels the norm of u is cancelling i know oh, yeah. i know it's, okay but no as, as i mentioned see, see that we are applied here to z and z plus which means that later on in when you do the analysis you have uh, the gap between two successive terms. And you know, in classical analysis, we, we sum it, then you yeah, tell us- The free it. variable basically is, sorry, the free variable basically is the xi in the definition, right? Yeah, xi is, is, is any feasible vector. Yes. And, so, and you see z and z plus. So this free variable only enters linearly, correct? Sorry, they, only, they are only what? 
the free variable, the psi, only enters in a linear way. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Henry? Oh. Well, how do you know I wanted to ask a question? <laughs> yeah, you have an unmuted microphone. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, uh, you don't have you to. Your... I mean, if, yeah, don't. No, well, thank you for your talk, but I do have a question. <laughs> oh, sure. that's all I've always wondered about. So you emphasized at the beginning that you update the primal, and this, mm -hmm. and this can change in many, many ways, mm -hmm. but the dual update is always the same. Right. And you wrote down that equation. And I find that what's hiding in the background is, of course, the original problem. And the update of the primal, even though it comes from minimization of the augmented Lagrangian, is mm -hmm. still equivalent to trying to use the optimality conditions for the original problem. Now, mm -hmm. it just so happens to be the same. But then the dual update, that's no longer true. You can use, you can use the information from the original problem to get a smarter dual update. And it's slightly different. There's like a projection involved. Yeah. What, why do people not use that? I'm wondering why it's always the same, simple, straightforward, linear uh, update, which seems to hide all the information from the original problem. I mean, it's, it's coming for free when, when you, you build the, your augmented Lagrangian. You, you get this update for free. So, so the, I mean, this is the very natural way to update the multiplier. So I don't, uh, I know that there, there are some words that discussing different ways to update the multiplier, but what, what is missing in this, in this update? Why, why do you want to use a more sophisticated way? To, to well, update? from what I understand is everything is the Lagrange multiplier. If God came and I shouldn't say God, but if somebody came and gave you magically the correct multiplier, you would be done. Yeah, of course. So if you, and uh, and what's and it seems if you have a better way to update multipliers, you speed up conversions. So mm -hmm. that's sort of why I'm asking the question. No, I'm not I, sure it helps, but I'm just wondering. Yeah, it's it's a good it's a good one. I mean. I don't know if I never seen results saying that if you update and multiply differently and uh, do accelerate. I mean, at least not theoretically accelerate. So there are results in in for the nonlinear case. If your constraints are nonlinear, yeah, then you can take a second order approximation of the constraint and get a second order multiplier update. Okay. So this is in the old Lagrangian methods. Right. But you have linear constraints, so I guess you can't do that here. No, I, I guess you are talking also it's a, it's, it's a non-convex problem if you have a non-linear constraint. Thanks. So it's, a, it's a completely different ball game. Yeah. OK, thank you. Uh, OK, hi. Uh, uh, hi. Uh, this is Boris Mordekovich. Uh, Shoham, I, I have a question. Uh, uh, could I ask a question, Radu? Sure. Uh, uh, that my question is regarding uh, augmented Lagrangian methods for uh, for problem you consider. Uh, which uh, rate of convergence could you achieve with your uh, modification? So as I mentioned, if you take if you take here. You see the prim, the prim algorithmic map to be augmented Lagrangian, which is nothing but exact minimization of the of the augmented Lagrangian, and you plug it here. You plug it here. You get so it depends. If you have strong convexity, then your sigma is, is, is sigma is positive. You get n squared. If sigma is zero, you get ergo, non-ergodic. One over n. 
Uh, okay, uh, let's uh, discuss some other terms. Consider just convex case. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I know that you consider this kind of uh, uh, convergence rate uh, uh, in terms of n and square. But if you uh, talk about uh, more traditional convergence, like linear, uh, superlinear convergence, what could you get in, in this situation? In terms of asymptotic convergence, as you call this asymptotic, what, what could you get? Which rate could you achieve, please? It's a good question. I mean, this, this framework is for a non-asymptotic rate of convergence. Uh, it's a good question. I don't know what happened if you discuss using this model, this framework, uh, asymptotic rate of convergence. You mean, you mean local linear rate of convergence? Yeah, okay. Let, let's talk about some kind of classical setting, uh, uh, a local convergence, and we talk about asymptotic in terms of linear, superlinear, or things like that. Uh, then it would be interesting to see uh, what about your new algorithm, uh, modification of just the case of augmented Lagrangian, what could be achieved? That's just from curiosity. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I, uh, we studied uh, some, the asymptotic rate of conversion, so I really don't know what. Uh... Okay, that would be interesting because uh, to make a bridge, to make a bridge between, yes. I think many works are using asymptotic rate and your approach uh, is non-asymptotic. That would be nice to clarify. And another question, uh, Shoham. Boris, Boris, uh, Boris, if I, if I, so, so, uh, so the results by Shoham, they, they are, these are rates for function values and for this so-called feasibility measure. Okay? Yeah. So, okay. So, I'm talking about uh, talking not about function. talking about yeah. superlinear convergence. Okay? So these are these are uh, second-order time results for the iterates. Mm -hmm. okay? That's right. I'm talking about iterates. I'm talking about convergence of iterates. Yes. So it's just not, not to mix things. Yeah. It's another. another yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with you, rather. No question about it. Yeah, I, okay. I should formulate in a more specific way. Talk about uh, iterates. What yeah. would we get for iter for, for in this primal variable? Not even talking about lambda. You know, we use this primal dual method, but we are looking for primal variable. Then uh, that's what my question is. Would be interesting, at least for my curiosity, to clarify the connections between uh, uh, different approaches. Okay, that might be, uh, it would be nice to think uh, uh, more about it. Uh, Boris, just please take into account that for this type of results, either in an unconstrained case, one needs, as I said, second order assumptions, huh? like Hessian or the Hess Hessian yeah, line. That's right, that's, that's, that's right. You know, if you're setting, about... This is not assumed, so he has uh, first order methods. So he doesn't, he's not assuming that second derivative exists. So. Okay, yeah. then I think, you know, for example, talking about superlinear convergence, there are no hope to get anything. That's what you, you mean, right? If because you don't you know, assume so, anything else, I guess it's obvious. Yeah. But okay. if, you, if you do, but in any case, I guess you need, in, in all the results that you're talking about, you do assume more. Uh, more uh, more assumption than what what we are assuming here. So yes. yes. Okay. Okay. That's very good observation. That's very good. And another question: uh, What about non-polyhedral problems? Uh, could you develop your approach for non-polyhedral problems without you know this convexity but not polyhedrality? Yeah, I, I think I think uh, we talked about it, uh, Mark and I. And you can you can for a non-linear. Uh, in uh, inequality constraint, you need to work a little bit. But we, we never wrote the details, but it seems that it's, it's doable. Right, uh, because uh, uh, no, to my modest experience, there are huge differences between polyhedral problems and non-polyhedral problems. Even ice cream, uh, yeah, for this, uh, the simplest non-polyhedral situation, uh, in particular for augmented Lagrange, which I've been recently involved, there are actually huge difference between Yes. Uh, Non-linear programming and even ice cream. Yes, that's why you know uh, my curiosity uh, come from. Okay. Yeah. yeah I get this is a very good question. What is a very very correct observation? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, 
I think it can be done. But yes. Okay, just, wonderful. Uh, just keep me posted. If, if if it can be done, and you will do, I would much interested on this. Okay. Sure. Thanks, Boris. Thank you, yeah, Boris. Thank you very much. So, uh, are there other questions? So we had a raised hand. Uh, not anymore. So we have uh, okay. Yura is raising the hand. Okay, Yura. Yura Malitsky. Question: Can you show me your race? Uh, the final result. Yes. Here, here is for yes. the strong yes. economy. That's fine. Yes, that's fine. That's fine. I, I'm slightly surprised that you don't have absolute value for objective function, right? Your iterates are infeasible in general. So fxk can be less than fx f at x star. Mm -hmm. This is uh, yeah. This so is the classic. This is the classical result. I mean, you you can get here. It's it's you know it's by, by applying the classical arguments that you are maximizing over all multipliers, but you can get the same results on the augmented Lagrangian diffusion. No, no, no. I mean, I'm fine with this result, but I think for objective psi, you should you should put absolute value. Uh, I think the the right hand side has to be different slightly, and strong duality will give will give you lower bound. But just upper bound is slightly meaningless in this case because your iterates can be uh, yeah. infeasible. Yeah, therefore, therefore the, the combination with the feasibility violation is important. Together, it's, it's, yeah, but it's I mean, a uh, mean, meaningful result. I, I agree, but then the bound in the right-hand side will be different if you put uh, absolute value. It will be slightly more complicated, I believe. I don't know. I just I, I have impression. I understand what you're saying. It's uh, it's I mean classical results are the same. I mean all classical results about rates is are the same, measuring the same without the absolute value. I mean, not no, but why, why why without? I think without it's it's not correct. I think they they must be with, with absolute value. So I think if if you want it, if you don't want to split, so it, it's a matter of. I don't know if to say. No, no, no. I, wa I want to split. I want to have feasibility rate and for objective. But I'm not I sure that you can get it with absolute value. I never... No, no, but I, I think you will have if you assume strong strong duality, and you, you will have you will also have lower bound for for the objective. Okay, if you have an additional assumption on the duality, maybe I don't know. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a good question. But you you also assume strong duality for this problem, so it, it's okay. You have Y star, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean. It's a good question. I, don't, I mean, we... okay, okay, yeah. Thanks. Thank you, thanks. So we have two more questions in the chat, or two two in the chat. Song Kyung or Song Kyung. So sorry. Yes. Hi. Um, hey. I have a basic homework question. Uh, in the very beginning, you mentioned Lagrangian something. You need a saddle point. Uh, m my naive question is. Uh, I'm an outsider. Optimization, I'm thinking you need like a minimum or a maximum. Why do you need a saddle point? Uh, like as you were mentioning, you, 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 want, you want the existence of strong duality to have a primal and well solutions. I mean, I, I'm assuming it the, the most uh, simple and easy, easy way. I mean, as I mentioned, you can discuss several other more sophisticated uh, assumptions. But this here is since we discuss more, the, the more important series is discussing the algorithms. I'm not talking about the, the best way to assume about the existence of a settle point. Once you have a settle point, you have, you have everything. Oh, I meant like from this from the sense of convergence, like a maximum minimum, you converge to a point, but when it's saddle, it can go sideways. No, no, but no, but there is another explanation. So when you have some linear operators in the problem, you cannot you, you cannot solve this only by a primal space method. You need a primal dual method. Yeah. Yeah. I'm and, gonna, I'm, and, I'll go look at those terms. And, and then, you, then you will solve both the primal and the dual problem. Simultaneously, you solve Simultaneously. both problems. Yeah. Oh, that's why. So yes. on, on one dimension primal, the other dimension dual. That's why you need yeah, to this is this is all the idea of a Grangian based method that you, yes. you cannot use primal methods to solve them because of the linear constraint. But you need to, to work with Lagrangians and then and then 
these methods are yes. solving simultaneously the primal and dual problems together. Sorry, last quick clarification question. Lagrangian optimization, that's a subset of optimization? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I'll look into that. Thank you. Great <laughs> homework question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, David Hailu, a raise hand. So please. Yeah. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Um, I wanted to ask you, like, did you apply the code, and how significant was the result or the acceleration? And in the case of, for example, um, discrete problems, if you have discrete problems which are originally not convex, but um, I believe the, the, the Lagrangian function is convex, but not differentiable everywhere. Um, have you thought of this or have you applied to this? Um, another thing is, do you have some kind of Git code available? Yeah. No, no, not something officially. I mean, it's, it's a theoretical uh, study. I, I played a, a bit with, with the code to see that we, we indeed get acceleration and we do get. Uh, it obviously depends if you work with the strong convex set, setting or the, the convex setting, but, but I don't have um, publicly uh, code for that. But as you've seen, it's, it's very simple to code it and we can get. Um, actually, like one of the biggest challenges of the Lagrangian relaxation is its speed is not actually that good. It, it, it has really one of the worst performing when it comes to speed. Um, so if you have a real data of how it's much- like all the, It's like all first order, order methods, they are quite slow, are, we know it. True, but yeah. how, how, how significant did, the, did, did um, this past- um, I, mean, this, I, I didn't make a, an intensive numerical comparison, but. But in the in the few that I tried, I've seen that it's uh, it's significant. But I mean, I guess it depends on your uh, problem data that you need to verify. Right? I, I I get that this answers also the the question by Tom, who is also mm -hmm. asking you know, if you have any numerical results. Yeah. Oh? Um. And one more question. Yeah. Um, do you have any kind of zigzag problems or did you try to tackle this kind of, sometimes Lagrangian problems can have this zigzag nature? Um, you come again, across it or? I didn't uh, make an extent. This also, this also relates to the first question that was asked. There are different ways to update the Lagrangian multiplier and Depending on, for example, on this, zigzag you have to problem. be more precise. Zigzag for what? I mean, uh, they the can cannot be zigzag for function values. Yeah, they, they, these are real numbers. Zigzag mean, meaning that when the um, when two consecutive um, subgradients or um, this vectors. But, but what is zigzag? Can you say so? I mean, the, there is the, so there was no result about the sequence of iterates presented. So I mean, yes, yes. But some, this is a one 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 problem with the the speed of the Lagrangian relaxation. That, that's why I mentioned it. And what I wanted to mention was there are different ways to update the Lagrangian multipliers um, because of this issue. It for, this is for sure. Yeah, there are yeah. different ways to update. Yes. Okay. Tom. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, my question was about uh, more practically, like did you, did you do some numerical implementation you for, for example, the augmented Lagrangian to see numerically the improvement? Yeah, I, as I mentioned, but not, not something officially. I mean, we didn't uh, make any numerics in the paper, but just uh, for curiosity, we have seen that we get acceleration and, uh, for, uh, even, like, uh, even, even practically, you see the acceleration. Yeah, yeah. and for the theoretician like us, it's uh, it's enough. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Thank sure. you. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Are there other questions? I would maybe have a very, very, very short question. 
Sure. Just out of curiosity, yeah. what would happen if you would like to distribute the algorithm as you would usually do with or in many versions for Lagrangian methods? Did you think about that? Is that also working in the same framework? Because you mentioned the block case, right? Now remember your A operator is really block partitions, so that like a network optimization problems. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Would that go through just like what you present, or do you think would there be some modifications to be to be done? I I guess the major issue will be with your multiplier update that mm -hmm. usually need to combine mm. all blocks together. I mean, if you have some block separability structure in your optimization model, so by, by, by default, you can get um, parallel updates and therefore mm. you might be able to get some distribu distribu distributive uh, computations. We actually also shown that uh, not alternating the Jacobi Mm -hmm. version that you can update the blocks in parallel uh, is also nice okay but i am afraid that at, at the end of the day uh, maybe your multiplier is uh, will be in a central computing uh, center which but, would make sense but but but, yeah. but the premal could be divided to yeah to other yeah it's a good question i mean i mean since since we have, we have witnessed that all Lagrangian laser is set up for nice, so I guess it's more structure. It's a more issue of the of the algorithmic map that you are choosing. If you have some distrib distributive nature of the algorithmic mapping that you choose, mm -hmm. then then you are you are okay. I mean, I guess so. Yes, um, I don't know uh, of any Lagrangian based method that. I mean, developed specifically for for distributive computing. I mean, a method that that was never discussed before, just invented for distributive, right? I, I don't. I'm not familiar with it, but maybe maybe there is. Well, I mean, Lagrangian I mean, methods some, are some very. Of them have uh, the ability to be distributive by nature, and some of them are not. But I'm not sure. I mean. Anyway, if you have in mind a specific algorithm that is distributed, we can discuss. Uh, we have have something very concrete in mind. No, this is what is nice in this framework. So you, you consider you have a certain Lagrangian-based mm -hmm. method in your mind. You can just check if it's nice. Once okay. it's nice, you're done. Yeah, I guess the, the issue is with the me with the metric, right? Because then you would also need to choose the metric in a maybe a bit more sophisticated way. So I mean that the Q and the P. Yeah, that that I, might be an issue in in distributed cases. You see that, uh, yeah. But you besides see, that, I understand. Uh, I guess I guess what you say is true. I have the feeling you're right. Again, the the P and Q, as as I mentioned, yeah. a few examples there, usually uh, depends on your prox matrix. Absolutely, absolutely. So if yes. you define it properly, I guess you you could you could you can make it. Very nice. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Song Kyung, another question. Yes. So um, I have a quick question if you're comfortable answering here. For an early stage researcher, I'm curious in your case, what tip to scale for you to towards optimization? Sorry, uh, again? You're, I'm guessing your field is optimization, your research field, optimization. Yeah. Yeah. What made you go this way? Of all the different math research areas, what made you go this way? Why I choose optimization? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very good question. I suggest Radu stop the recording yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. Then I, will answer. <laughs> so, I have a very good answer to this, but please stop recording and please Radu. <laughs> <laughs> was it Shimon or was it Mark? <laughs> Mark, yeah, maybe or, or Mark. Dan, yeah, or yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's very, it's a very difficult question. It's hard to answer. <laughs> because I need to pick one right now, and there's too okay. many. Especially these days with so many yeah. online seminars, it's going in circles. <laughs> no, yeah. This is a good choice. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> now I know what a Lagrangian is. Look, <laughs> okay. The good thing is that it's always optimal. 
<laughs> yes. Okay, are there other questions? Okay, so I, I, I would have a comment, Shoham. So, I mean, your, your work is uh, almost two years old and like it appeared 2010. And in the very nice contribution, in the, in the meantime, yeah, there, there are some, some other works like on the same topic in the continuous and discrete time. Okay. Uh, which then uh, in the convex regime yeah, can provide the rates of one over n squared. Uh, yeah, for the same quantities, but the absolute value of the objective function values, uh -huh. as, as Jura said, and for the, also for the primal dual gap. But then the analysis is probably less aesthetic, less clear, but sometimes techniques yeah, uh, beat uh, geometric intuition. That you mean a non-ergodic result? Yes. yes. Okay. It's, it's a work of you. I mean, just to uh, yes, send, send, send me a reference. We also have a paper on this, but uh, there are also some, some other groups, some uh, Chinese colleagues. Okay, yeah. we'll check it out. I have a remark on that. Uh, I, I will, first of all, I would be glad to see that, uh, Radu, mm -hmm. because it seems to me that it's a contradiction to the theory. Why? Uh, well, because uh, I don't think that you can accelerate. Uh, even, I mean, how, how can you accelerate the, the, how can you get a non-ergodic acceleration in, with, a, with a square rate? And you don't you don't pay anything for free. Doesn't make no. sense to me. No, no. Free. It is you yeah. What? So what? Get, wait, wait a minute. Or maybe I, I misunderstood. For example, the theorem one, you get it for free in the convex case exactly this way. The rate of O of one over square. Yes. I don't. Uh, you have for primal and for the dual sequence uh, a nester of type update. I think that it's a contradiction to the optimal theory of, ne of uh, Nemirovsky and so I think it's No, since it, in the unconstrained case, you get one over k squared. Yeah, but this is- No, but, but it's a non-smooth problem. We're not talking about an unconstrained problem here. We're no, no. Constrained problem. We're yes, con no, constrained with smooth objective. Ah, smooth objective. Yes. What do you mean smooth object? Is a function? I mean, the result here is for a non-smooth function. Yes. Okay, I'm talking about a, a, a the objective function, which is- The which objective is, from the very beginning is only smooth? So it it's is not extended valued? No, no, it is a differentiable function with, uh, yes, in, in convex. Which leaves its continuous gradient, I guess. Yes. But then with respect to linear constraints. Yeah. I see. Uh -huh. Talk about augmented Lagrangian method. Yeah? And then it is not only the, okay, one gets the rates, one over k squared plus iterate convergence for some choice. Right, right. If, if you say if you say it's smooth, it's, it's a completely different ball okay. because in this yeah. specific case, when psi is extended value to lower semi-continuous uh, convex, I think it could be a, a contradiction to the theory. No, no. Yes. So it's right. smooth. In the smooth case, it is what I said. It is uh, so the schemes are discretization of continuous time approaches. Uh, well, uh, I don't care about continuous uh, discretization. Oh, you but... you have, no, it says you have a scheme, a discrete scheme. Yes, it is. Okay, fine. I mean, forget, about, I just... the, forget about the origin. I mean, the... No, no, but the origin mark is important since one has similar results in the con continuous time. Yeah, and then, in, general, and this... in general, the continuous time is much more easier to prove I, results. I, I fully agree. agree. I fully agree, but... There is the it's... same type of results. Yeah? This, and this no, is but a... okay, because it's the same type of result under completely different condition. No, no. Same no. problem, same conditions. It's very it's very nice parallelism. Now, again, you say that your psi is extended valued non-smooth? No, no, I said I said it is convex and uh, C1. So that's, that's, that's not the same condition. That's not the same, the same media. It's an, it's a, you are dealing with a smooth problem. Well, yes. you are dealing with, an, with, with a general uh, uh, arbitrary uh, uh, LSC convex function. Yeah, I, 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 cannot, I cannot see how you can prove a fast convergence in, in, in the in no. case. So, in the case that Shuan presented. So I, I said it is a C1 convex objective function. Okay. But, but with respect to linear constraints, 
yeah, and, yeah, and, and taken in this way, I wouldn't see this problem as a smooth problem. Right? Still, I wouldn't see it as a smooth problem because of the of the of the constraints. It already makes it in a certain way non smooth. Yeah? But objective is smooth. Yeah? Okay, but the, here the objective is non smooth. Yes. I have no problem with that. No, but okay. So then we agree that uh, we have uh, we made both a constructive uh, statement. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah, so that's a different assumption. Actually, it would be I, I want to see that, of course, definitely. Yeah, please send, send your paper. Sure. Uh, or you mentioned that other people have done it also. I mean, I don't know which 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 was your. Are these, there are there are, there are several. Paper, or are they, Sorry. Or, or, are these already published in the archive? Jo I mean, in journals or are they just? No, no. In, in paper? The, the papers are very recent. They are in preprint, but they they are in in the process of, uh, yeah. Of publication. Okay. Well, whenever, uh, please send us send this to us. It's interesting. Yeah. So it, it is. It is an archive. It is called Fast Augmented Lagrangian Method. But as I said, so there are. This is, it is not the only contribution. There are also other contributions. But so what we did, we looked also on the, the question of convergence of iterates, yeah? and we know that for Nesterov schemes, yeah. So the, the iterates converge only un, under symbol dosal assumptions and with yeah all these things play a role well that's that's of less and of less of plus rate plus the yeah, first I understand, I understand. Yeah, that's, that's okay now it was just a comment just to to have a full picture interesting yeah okay are there other questions comments remarks so shoham we had uh, probably the longest ovos event yeah <laughs> Many, many good questions, a very good discussion, very, very nice talk. Uh, probably the best question asked in the last two years. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I need to think about yeah, why, why I choose optimization. Yes, very good. Is, is there a post party or it ends after the recording ends? No, it, it, okay, no yeah. there, there is no party. <laughs> no, no party. Party again. Post post recording conversation. No, no, no. There is no. So it ends here. We will have uh, our uh, last uh, talk of this season uh, next Monday. We meet again, same time, another Zoom room. But I will send a link. Another person to say to ask why you choose uh, this. Yes. <laughs> Matthias, be prepared. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> hey, he, already, he already left. <laughs> so, Shoham, uh, please. Thank send... you very much, Radu. Thank you. Yes, it was great. Please send me the slides there to, to post them on the website. And I will also post the video uh, on YouTube and our, and our website. And just like to announce that our last speaker of the season will be Matthias Stauliger. Okay. Yeah. See you next Monday. Have a great week. See you. Thank you very much, Radu. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. Bye.